NVIDIA just completely changed the AI market, and I don't think people understand truly what's happening right now. So let me explain a little bit more in today's episode. I want to thank The Motley Fool for sponsoring this video, and check out fool.com slash Jose for the 10 best stocks to buy now. With that link, you get a promotional offer for the subscription service. Now, let's continue with today's episode. All right, welcome back to another episode. Today, we are live here at CES. I am in Las Vegas, kind of doing a lot of events here with NVIDIA. So today we had the NVIDIA live keynote where Jensen kind of talked a little bit about, uh, not a little bit, a lot about the future of the AI market. Now, I am going to be honest, right? This is typically a consumer-based show. And usually I, coming into this conference, and remember, it's not just NVIDIA. I also have plans of doing other companies. I might be going to AMD's keynote later today to get a little bit more research on that. Uh, so make sure to stay tuned to the overall channel. But typically, this is a consumer-based show. So you hear about consumer-based products. But Jensen said, you know what? Let's talk about AI. Let's talk about data center. And we heard a lot of great updates. We heard new open source models. We heard the new Ruben plat Rever pl platform is in full production right now. They even introduced some major changes in how some of the constraints happening with AI that is helping them improve their overall efficiencies. The first thing I want to discuss is the Vero Rubin, right? This is crucial because this is the data center market. This is the AI market. This is what's driving NVIDIA's multi-trillion dollar opportunity. And today they did kick off the next generation of Rubin with six new chips to create one super incredible AI supercomputer. Now, in forms of performance, I think this is insane, right? We continue to see the advancements of, of AI. We continue to see other competitors come out there. We know, uh, for example, many people uh, fear the TPU market, fear the AMD market. Now, while I am bullish on both Google and AMD, I always believe that NVIDIA is going to be the king for the foreseeable future. Now, they mentioned the Rubin platform harnesses extreme co-design across hardware and software. And what they mean by co-design is they work with, they design six different chips. Now, all those different chips are optimized to work well with each other, to work well with the AI industry and the kind of AI architecture that was happening right now, and the same aspect in the software side. So with this amazing extreme code design across their various products, they achieve up to 10 times reduction in inference token costs. So to generate inference token, it's about, it's 10 times cheaper. That is insane. I, I, if it that alone will, could drive massive demand for AI innovation. If AI becomes cheaper, more people start developing more solutions, cooler solutions, then those solutions explode or more breakthroughs happen, and then you get more demand, you get more needs for more data center solutions. So that's why NVIDIA wants to continue to make AI cheaper and cheaper. Now, like I mentioned, this platform is already in full production right now, which is crazy to me, right? Because they are still in the Blackwell. Blackwell Ultra, what came out not even a year ago, Blackwell Ultra. Uh, so it's interesting to see how Blackwell Ultra is in kind of full mode and now you're having the production growth here or the ramp up process of Vera Rubin and how that equates. We know that NVIDIA, for example, in the past has talked to us about a $500 billion revenue from 2025 to 2026 between Blackwell and, and Rubin. Does kind of them having it a little bit earlier than expected, is this going to increase that revenue or is it just a trade-off of revenue? It's just a trade-off from Blackwell to Rubin due to the constraint constraints in the overall supply chain. So tomorrow, there are a few analyst Q&A sessions and we might hear some uh, some about, uh, I think there was a financial Q&A session earlier today. Uh, so we might get more information, but I would love to hear that, right? What is happening with that $500 billion opportunity that NVIDIA mentioned for 2025 and 2026? Now with this new Vera Rubin, they continue to discuss that among the world's leading AI labs are going to be using this, right? You have your AWS, you have Anthropic, you have Black Forest Labs, you have Cisco, you have Core Weave, and the list goes on and on. And then you have a lot of different CEOs from a lot of different companies explaining how they're so excited about the Rubin platform. Now, one of the craziest things, and this is how they're completely changing the market. NVIDIA, with each chip they continue, or each 
infrastructure or each solution, they continue to grow and grow and introduce something new, right? With the Blackwell platform, what really changed the game was NVL 72. The ability to connect 72 GPUs together with the G, uh, with their NVLink solution, right? Um, that was the big moment for Blackwell. For Hopper, it was just AI innovation within itself, right? Just the uh, AI market started to pick up with Hopper. Now here with Ruben, Vero Ruben, Vero Ruben Ultra is going to be a whole different beast that comes out next year. So we'll not even talk, we won't talk about that, but at least from what we're seeing right now, one of the biggest changes happening with context memory or context coming in from these prompts and prompts are getting longer and longer, or the input context is getting longer. And this is creating bottlenecks. And this is where NVIDIA has actually created various solutions, right? We saw CPX, I believe it's called CPX9, uh, which is supposed to do for long-term context. That wasn't discussed much today during the keynote, but that is expected to come out later this year. And today they did announce AI native storage, secure software defined infrastructure. So NVIDIA Rubin introduces NVIDIA inference context memory storage platform, a new class of AI native storage infrastructure designed to scale inference context at gigascale, and it is powered by the Bluefield 4. So what gets me excited about this, right, is this is another way that NVIDIA is trying to change the market because here we kind of see a little bit of the constraints. So as AI models scale to trillions of parameters and multi-step reasoning, they generate vast amounts of context data represented by KB cache, critical for accuracy, user experience, and continuity. Now, a KV cache cannot be stored on GPUs long-term, as this would create bottlenecks for real-time inference in multi-agent systems. AI native applications require a new kind of scale infrastructure to store and share this data. So this is a new way of kind of handling that data, that storage, that memory context data has created a bottleneck. And as we continue to evolve into AI agentic, that was a main issue. NVIDIA has solved that. Now we do have AMD reporting their keynotes later today. I will be posting on this on X too. If you guys see any images or pictures or you want to learn, make sure to follow me on X. But also if you are serious about AI and semiconductor investing, if you want the greatest deep dives on earnings analysis and company analysis for the AI and semiconductor industry, make sure to check out community.whatthechiphappened.com. I do have 33% off my annual subscription if you use code 2026, 2026. And this is a platform where I'm going to be showing, sharing a lot of the dimes, a lot of understanding of the semiconductor industry and a lot into my overall thoughts. So make sure to check out whatthechiphappened.com. Now, the other thing that completely changed the AI market, in my opinion, is NVIDIA announces numerous new open source models. And they actually... Do I, do I say actually a lot? I think I do. So excuse my constant saying of certain words, but I have, I, I recently recorded an interview with the VP of generative AI and software at NVIDIA. That interview should be coming out in the upcoming day or two. So stay tuned. We talk a lot about the open source models, but one open source solution that they announced that I thought was crazy was Alpha Mayo or Mayo. I'm pretty sure I'm butchering it. I have to rewatch the video. So excuse me, Alpha Mayo. Mayo, 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 whatever. But overall, this is the first open reasoning vision language action model designed to tackle long tail autonomous driving challenges. NVIDIA's family also includes simulation tools and data assets for AV development. Now with this, there's going to be a lot of players that are going to be focusing on creating level four autonomous driving solutions. Now, the great thing about this is a thinking model. I mean, think about it when you drive, right? If you see something you encounter, you think, you pause, oh, look, road closure, what do I do? Let me think it through. There's a way for me to go all the way, that way. I can't go through the road closure, let me go that way. That's how a vehicle has to think. Oh, look, a vehicle is coming the wrong way. Maybe, maybe I should get out of the way, even though I'm supposed to be in this lane. So all these, in, in, in theory, any form of AI agents, any task in general, is never a smooth thing. There's always some variability, something that goes wrong, something that goes different. And that's why you need to think. Now, NVIDIA releasing this is pretty insane. And 
the reason NVIDIA releases a lot of these open source models is it helps build up the ecosystem, right? NVIDIA doesn't have to go and finish building this, but they continue to develop it. And then maybe your Toyota or whoever, we're going to see your Mercedes, does something on top of it and creates a very, very competitive product. Talking about uh, Mercedes, uh, NVIDIA's drive, autonomous vehicle software that debuts, debuts in, I'm pretty sure I put you that one too, in all new Mercedes-Benz CLA. This is going to be a level two driver assistance system, and it's expected to be fully rolled out in the U.S. by the end of the year, in, in, in certain places, right? Product launch in the United States. So this is a point-to-point -point driver system, and it's expected to be to hit certain roads by this year. So think of it pretty much as Tesla's FSD, right? Tesla's FSD is a level two plus, 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 enhanced level two point at a point uh, driver assistance where you, the viewer, you, the driver still technically have to be there and pay attention and take control at any possible moment. But if all conditions are perfect, it can take you from one point to another point without any interventions. All right. So here is the point to point. Uh, you can see drive, you can see stopping, you can see turning. It yields to a jaywalker. Damn jaywalkers. Um, keeps going, stops at stop signs, heal to pedestrians on right turn. And again, this is pretty impressive if you don't have a Tesla at the moment, because Tesla does a lot of this already. Uh, I mean, I, point to point for me is, is almost with no interruption, but it's crazy to see a company be able to do this thanks to NVIDIA's open source solutions. And NVIDIA and Mercedes have had a very long-term partnership, so it's not like it's just a plug-and-play style thing. They've been a, a strong research and development platform here, uh, but still it's impressive to see how this market is moving on and on. Uh, so yeah, that's that video there. Let's see what else we had. So we had, um, we had that solution with Mercedes-Benz. The only final, uh, the final thing I wanted to showcase is NVIDIA also announced more updates to some of their other open source models. They have open source models for the robotics world, for the climate world, for the autonomous vehicle, for the healthcare market, for the techs with Nemotron, um, for Hygienic AI, uh, I don't know if I said for climate control. And through all these, they did announce various few updates or upgrades to those models. Nothing here that should create, in my opinion, anything exciting in the stock price or anything like this. And even Vera Rubin, right? I just think in general, I don't, uh, I'm a long-term investor, so I don't care if the stock price doesn't move tomorrow or next week. But I think everything we saw here today is indication why NVIDIA can truly be a $10 trillion company in the future. So I'm happy to be here at CES. Uh, I'm happy to have met a lot of cool people here. Uh, and I'm happy to hopefully be providing a lot of great content to you guys. I hope you guys like this. Let me know. It, does the holding the mic help a little bit with my energy? Does it, does it help a little bit with the tone of the video? Maybe I might st start doing that back home. So take care, guys. Have a good day. Make sure to check out whatthechiphappened.com. Use coupon code 2026. Thank you.